Hello everyone, it's Jade from Boho Bookworm. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my August wrap up part one. Now, oddly, I have been really craving rom coms lately. I am a thriller horror lover. Gritty, dark, disturbing, yes please. True crime, just give me all the gore. However, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's now that I have this relationship going on or what, but I just want to read rom coms, like light, fluffy, contemporary women's fiction. So I picked up The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary and I was so surprised. I thought, okay, let me just read like a, a book and get it out my system, hate it and realise they're just not for me. However, I bloody loved it. I actually kind of feel like The Flat Share had a little bit of everything, including some domestic suspense. Like I just wasn't expecting it. So the flat share is about this girl called Tiffy who lives in London, she's got her dream job, however it doesn't pay the most and London is a very expensive place to live. So she ends up signing up for this like flat share situation with this guy called Leon who they basically, because he's this nurse and she has a normal day job, his hours are completely different to hers. So even though the, the, house, the flat is one bedroom, one bed, they're never in the flat at the same time. So they have all these rules, like they'll never meet, they share the bed, but they alternate usage of said flat. So she moves in and they start exchanging letters back and forth, which is quite cutesy and stuff. All the while, we're kind of following Tiffy's emotional turmoil as she's just recently gotten out of quite a horrible, toxic relationship with this guy called Justin. I was really surprised with the level of depth the book had with such a serious subject we we go through her triggers with her and how such a horrible relationship could really affect you and because i had one of those quite recently I, it ended terribly though like, i'm not going to go into it but it was just awful and so i really connected with her on that wavelength she just she'd lost herself in this really abusive relationship all of her confidence was just zapped out of her and then we've got leon who you know he's got issues of his own as well he has a brother, a younger brother, who is in jail for a crime that he didn't commit. He's also just recently had this horrible breakup as well with this kind of really horrible woman. Not quite as bad as Justin, but... And he's also got kind of like issues with his mother, mummy issues, because his mum used to be involved in all these abusive relationships that she kept going back to back in the day. So he's got some like childhood trauma of his own. And then there's this hilarious chance meeting between Leon and Tiffy. They lock eyes for the first time and so begins this cutesy little romance. So at first, the opening chapter I really liked, but then it went on to Leon's, Leon, Leon's chapters. And I just kind of felt like the book, I don't, I, it threw me off the way that his chapters were written. It's very robotic. It, it's not full sentences. And it just seemed like really, lazy writing and I didn't really understand that aspect of the book. Even if you're not a man of many words, you can at least string a sentence together. It, yeah, a lot of people didn't like the book because of the way his chapters were laid out or written, the format of it. It was just a bit weird and it didn't really need to be in the book at all. In fact, it's like the author wanted to give it a flaw. I'm not usually one for slow burning romance books, but I really did like this one. There was a realness to this book as well, like every character was so raw, they all had their own like quirks and flaws, they all, none of them were perfect and that I really appreciated because we, none of us are perfect. We go inside their heads and some of the maybe not so perfect thoughts that they have and I really appreciated that. I just found them really relatable characters that you just can't help but love. And the author really does tackle some hard hitting subjects such as abusive relationships, anxiety, and wrongful incarceration. I just found like there was this, this intimacy to the book. And it's, it's kind of like rife with this comical sexual tension that isn't too offensive. And also something that was lovely about the book is that the, the relationship, the blossoming relationship between the two main characters was so healthy. It wasn't romanticizing toxic relationships whatsoever as many books seem to do. And that was unique and powerful. I mean, of course, it's a rom-com. There were parts that I found really cringy and kind of predictable. It kind of comes with the territory of a rom-com, doesn't it? It was just a really fun, wholesome read that I really, really enjoyed. And it was peppered with just the right amount of cliches and tropes that made it wonderful. I gave it a four out of five star review. Then I read 
the last thing he told me by Laura Dave. I mean, this book was quite hyped up around booktube and bookstagram, so I was like, all right, let me give it a go. And I just need to start learning my lesson and not pick up overhyped books because I don't get it more often than not. The premise did not sound that intriguing to me, so I should have just stuck with my guns and realised that overhyped books usually don't do it for me. So this is a book about a woman called Hannah and she's been married for about a year and one day she receives this note and her husband never comes home and the note says protect her and he's referring to his 16 year old daughter and the 16 year old daughter has been pushing Hannah away ever since she's come into their lives so now that her husband's like disappeared and then his boss gets arrested and the FBI and US Marshals get involved and stuff like that and everything just blows up and she quickly realises that her husband is not who he said he was. We also find out that the daughter is the key to find out who he really is. So she ha has to protect this daughter at all costs now. And it's just kind of a story about them, the Hannah and this daughter starting to bond and grow together and discovering the truth. Because the daughter doesn't even really know what's going on. She's like got this weird amnesia thing going on. And this book just didn't do it for me. I think it started off quite strong, but then it just lost my interest. There was nothing enthralling about it to me. It was just this slow paced, boring mystery that did nothing for me. One thing I really picked up with this book is that there was, there just seemed to be this lack of enthusiasm. I found it mostly implausible and also just far too simplistic at the same time, which is weird. I, I rarely DNF books, I really do, like I try not to, I like to finish everything I start. I came really close to DNFing this one. It's a book that is already starting to flicker and fade from my mind. I gave this one a 2 out of 5 star review. Then we have The Arrangement by Kirsten Modlin. Something about her surname that just throws me off every time. So this is a book that went viral on TikTok. Again, over overhyped, but the premise sounded perfection to me, so I was like, okay. Everyone that I know and love on booktube and that I trust has been raving about this book. So I was like, all right, I know I don't normally like overhyped books, but I'm gonna just try it because you know what? The temptation is just too high sometimes. So the arrangement is about this married couple called Ainsley and Peter, but their marriage has started to really struggle lately. At a desperate attempt to fix their relationship, they decide to set up this arrangement where once a week they'll go on a date with someone, they download this dating app, they set up like different names for themselves, like nothing will link them back to their own lives. They also have rules set in place so they won't tell each other what they do on their dates or the sexual endeavours that they go on and stuff and it's just kind of supposed to be a way to spice up their own sex life again and kind of rekindle their marriage. However, it is not long before those rules are broken and everything <sighs> goes absolute batshit crazy. Like this book took a direction that I was not expecting. I mean this was such an engaging psychological suspenseful novel that kept me gripped from page one and then just like chucked me to the floor when I'd read the last page and I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like I need to read everything that this woman has ever written. It was fast in pace, fun, addictive and I also found it because it's quite a short book impressively intricate. It was super unpredictable. Like I, I had no idea what was going, what was going to happen, and the writing was excellent. I think my only qualm with it is that I wish that the author hadn't rushed the ending. It just felt very like wham. I wanted her to flesh out the conclusion a little bit more. But besides that, it was a fantastic domestic thriller. I'd highly recommend it if things like adultery in books don't offend you. Then we have a book that I just finished this morning when I was having my cinnamon bun latte and I was just pottering around my flat, I was listening to it on Audible. <sighs> it was just like another guilty pleasure like the flat share, If the Shoe Fits by Julie Maffrey. So this was like a cocktail mixture of Cinderella and The Bachelor. Anyone that knows me knows just how much I love The Bachelor. Not to mention Cindy, the main character in this book, is plus size so there's a lot of body positivity which we all love in books. So Cindy is now fresh out of her studies, she's just pocketed a degree in shoe design. Then she gets this opportunity to go on this reality dating show called Before Midnight. And obviously, you know, I don't think it's that scandalous to, if you're offered something like that, to be like, oh my god, 
this could do wonders for my career, like the exposure it gives you, the things it could do for you, the, the followers you gain, it, it could make a massive success out of you because your name is out there, your brand is out there. So that's kind of where her brain goes. And I feel like shows like The Bachelor, they really like make this massive scandal of, out of it and kick people off the shows if they even say something like, oh yeah, like I came on here to, have my music career take off or I came on here to be the next bachelor but I, I think everyone kind of wants a bit of slice of their cake don't they let's be honest and if you find love in the process hey ho it's fantastic I will say though no one will understand this if you don't watch the bachelor but Katie's season Connor who I just fell hopelessly in love with he arrived night one dressed as a cat with whiskers and all and he had I think I can't remember if it was a guitar or a ukulele but he was like singing his little songs to Katie and stuff and oh, I just adored him. However, it got a bit much after a while and now he's on Bachelor in Paradise and straight away there he is strumming along and I'm just like, you really just want to get your music out there mate. It's so obvious. Anyway, moving on. I kind of feel like If the Shoe Fits is this less offensive, more fun version of One, one to Watch, which also featured this plus size woman and her reality dating show experience, very much a spin-off of Bachelor. With One to Watch, I feel like it riled up a lot of readers because while we thought we were expecting this book all about body positivity, the main character did have a lot of confidence issues and there were a lot of really, really gut-wrenching things in this book that could be very triggering. It, yeah, I think it just tackled everything the wrong way, whereas If the Shoe Fits was just, like, perfect. So Cindy goes on to the show, which is produced by her stepmother, who, unlike in Cinderella, is actually really lovely and supportive. And then accompanying her on the show are her two stepsisters. And they're not like the ugly stepsisters like in Cinderella. They're actually really kind and beautiful. But the catch is that Cindy has to pretend that they're not her sisters. And then obviously we've got like Prince Charming. I do feel like the book was very loosely tied to Cinderella, like all the characters were all super unique, they had their own stories, it wasn't a complete replica of Cinderella. It was just this really light, entertaining and easy to read book. And I believe that it is the first in a series called Meant to Be, and basically every single book in this series is going to be written by a different author and it's all going to be a retelling of a fairy tale. So I'm interested to see what authors get on board with this and what retellings we're going to get. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 star review. So, so far, throughout August, I have not had a 5 star read, but I am busy reading That Night by Gillian McAllister and it's so riveting, so, so good. So, we still have, I can't remember what the date is right now, I think it's the 19th today as I'm filming this, so there's still some time to find that 5 star book of the month. Anyway, I've got to get to work. My alarm just went off on my phone, so I'm hoping that this video is actually okay. And didn't like glitch everything. Yes, I have alarms to tell me when to go to work because I need structure in my life. Anyway, I will talk to you all soon. Have a lovely day, bye bye.